GPU mining gets banned, an update on AMD's DLSS, and will you actually be able to buy a 6700 XT? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Brobot. Brobot is a free, super fast program that scours the internet searching for restocks of the latest GPUs, CPUs, and consoles to help you find what you're looking for before it goes out of stock. Thanks to Brobot, I was finally able to purchase a PS5 due to its extremely fast speed and in my case, I noticed it was actually minutes faster than all other popular bots I've tried. So if you're looking for a tool that can help you secure that new GPU, CPU, or console, be sure to click the Discord and Telegram links in the description below to find out more. So this first story comes from a recent Bloomberg article where they stated that, quote, China's Inner Mongolia has banned cryptocurrency mining and declared it will shut all such projects by April, spurring fears the world's number two economy will take more steps to eradicate the power-hungry practice. Now, this is absolutely huge news because China is one of the biggest areas for cryptocurrency mining, and one of the reasons as to why that is is because their power costs are actually just really low over there. Actually, if you take a look at both China and India, their power costs are extremely low. So, of course, in those countries, it's very profitable to do cryptocurrency mining, and China happens to be a place where a lot of people are able to get their hands on some sort of graphics card so they can set up these absolutely massive operations. But, of course, cryptocurrency mining mining is incredibly inefficient and it drives out the power and apparently it's been noticed and so in Inner Mongolia they're deciding at least to ban the act of cryptocurrency mining. So yeah, that's pretty huge news because that's a huge contributor to as to reasons why you potentially can't buy your own graphics card. Now of course we're just talking about Inner Mongolia. We're not talking about the entire country of China or at least not yet, but it is possible that if things continue like this, you could see that maybe starting with China as a whole, they start to ban cryptocurrency and then maybe other countries also start to ban cryptocurrency mining. Now, cryptocurrency itself is likely to stay around, but I think that if this does continue, a lot of these various different coins, such as, say, Ethereum, may actually change from the current proof of work to a proof of stake type of deal. So instead of a lot of people uh, buying GPUs to try and mine the cryptocurrency, it'll change to something else where that's just simply not necessary, which of course would be good for gamers because that will allow you to get your hands on GPUs more easily. Now, whether or not this is actually going to occur, I'm not entirely sure. And of course, it could be that even though it's technically banned over there a lot of operations may continue to actually still do that but we'll see what happens on that front and I think that this is actually a step in the right direction and hopefully things do continue down this path and more and more countries do start to ban the actual uh, cryptocurrency mining on GPUs now of course cryptocurrency mining on maybe specific ASICs could be a lot more efficient but you know overall I think that mining coins is probably not the way forward I'm not entirely sure what the answer is here I think that cryptocurrency as a concept is a good idea, but you know, there's a lot of e waste that occurs because of this whole thing. There's a lot of power draw that happens because of cryptocurrency mining. So, there's probably going to have to be some sort of alternative in the future to GPU mining as it's incredibly disruptive. It's and it's very, very power hungry. I mean, you take a look at the PC gaming industry as a whole, and if people can't buy new graphics cards, well, it's going to make it harder and harder for people to put out AAA games and you know, be selling them to new PC gamers with the latest and greatest hardware if they can't actually buy the latest and greatest hardware hardware. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is an update on AMD's DLSS. Now, if you watch the live stream today, which by the way, I did live stream the event, uh, you'll notice that they didn't talk about their Fidelity FX Super Resolution or what they, I'm calling AMD's answer to DLSS. And that's really unfortunate to see because, you know, I think that DLSS and Super Resolution type of uh, uh, programs and software are really, really beneficial to the PC gaming industry as it allows you to use a lot less of the GPU and get a lot better of a picture. Uh, uh, or at least get a pretty close to the same amount of picture with a lot less GPU usage. So I think it's really, really important. I mean, you can take an image at 1080p uh, with an NVIDIA card and upscale to 4K, and it looks pretty close to 4K native in a lot of games, and it's just using a whole lot less power, allowing you to get much higher frame rates. So yeah, it's really important that both these companies continue to work on their own implementations, in my opinion. And it's a big shame that AMD doesn't have it working yet, and it looks like NVIDIA is continuing to push DLSS very hard. Their new DLSS 2.0 implementation works very well and I'm seeing it in more and more games so if AMD doesn't have an answer to this soon it's definitely going to be bad news but the only update I really have on this of course since we didn't see it during the 6700 XT launch event is that I've heard that supposedly it's still being worked on um, I can't really share all of the details but yeah it's a little bit of a ways out here yet we'll see maybe we'll see it within the next say two to four months or something but it's certainly not around the corner at least from what I'm hearing but yeah 
that's basically all I can share on that front. And unfortunately, uh, there's just not a whole lot of news. So yeah, AMD, you really need to start working on DLSS or your competitor to it because yeah, NVIDIA is going to continue to pull ahead with cheaper graphics cards if you don't. Now, the final thing I want to talk about in this video is the whole 6700 XT scenario. Are you actually going to be able to buy one? Well, let's talk about that. So, you know, during the live stream, if you actually tuned in, you'll know that the 6700 XT was announced. It has, you know, 40 compute units running over 2.4 gigahertz, I believe, at 230 watts. Supposedly, according to AMD, it's going to be roughly as fast as a 3070. I believe it's probably on average when tech reviewers get their hands on it, probably going to be a little bit slower than the 3070, but I think it's going to be really close so in typical uh, recent AMD fashion it looks like because it'll likely be just a touch slower than the 3070 it's going to be just a touch cheaper at $480 now of course that's incredibly disappointing I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here but I gotta say it's incredibly disappointing to see AMD continue to raise their prices I mean $480 for what is essentially a mid-range GPU in 2021 is absolutely ridiculous I understand that you know we got all kinds of crazy stuff going on it's incredibly hard to get GPUs but you know all all of that aside, you know, just because there's uh, GPUs landing on eBay for a thousand dollars, you know, I get that these companies want to get a uh, piece of that pie, but you know, it's really unfortunate to see because if you take a look back at their previous 5700 XT, that was four hundred dollars, and I already thought that that was pretty expensive. I remember they tried to go for four hundred and fifty dollars, but there's absolutely an insane amount of outrage from the community, rightfully so. People were not going to accept that, but this time it looks like people have no choice but to accept four hundred and eighty dollars. But if you go even further back and take a look at their previous 70 class cards, you'll notice that they're actually were closer to around $200. So somehow within about two generations, we went to roughly somewhere around $200 to now close to $500. And I just, I don't understand how that even happened. I get that inflation occurred, but yeah, that's a little bit ridiculous. Now to answer the question of, are you actually going to be able to buy one on launch? Uh, probably not. Now I'm hearing that there's going to be a lot more supply of the 6700 XT. And in fact, um, um, I believe over at Hardware Box, uh, Tim got a hold of someone at AMD and they did confirm that there was going to be a lot more supply. However, you know, a lot more supply could mean instead of shipping 10 units, they ship maybe 100. So yeah, that's not necessarily telling us a whole lot. And frankly, I got to tell you guys, I don't have a lot of faith AMD is going to be able to meet demand. Because if you take a look at the 6800, 6800 XT and 6900 XT, they did a horrible job of meeting demand with those cards. And even if they did plan on making more of these cards, and even though you also can actually produce quite a bit more of these on the same wafer than you can of those cards it's still just going to be you know near impossible for them to meet demand even if they put basically all their resources into it and on top of that they have a whole lot of other things they need to focus on right now i mean they need to get the playstation 5 and xbox series x and xbox series s out the door i think they have some sort of obligation with those i'm not entirely sure um the cpus are just also a lot more profitable so they're starting to meet demand with the 5800x which is good news and the 5600x but they're still you know very very few uh, actual 5900X and 5950X is going out there. So yeah, those are a lot more profitable for them uh, to produce those chips rather than producing GPUs. So I just don't see them allocating a whole lot of wafers towards these new 6700 XTs. And yeah, it's going to be incredibly difficult to get one. But if you do want to try and get one, I would definitely be going to AMD.com on March 18th. That's when they will be actually launching. However, yeah, only go to AMD.com. Don't look for AIB models because, you know, we don't know what these AIB models are going to be. They could be better they could be worse but I'm there's one thing that's for certain most of these AIB models are almost certainly going to be much much more expensive this happened in the past and I wouldn't be surprised if it happens again I mean you think $480 is bad wait till you see AIB models coming in at say you know $600 $650 don't be surprised if you see that so if you want to try and get one definitely only go to amd.com don't even bother looking at AIB models because uh, you know at 6700 XT at $650 absolutely outrageous don't even consider it that's ridiculous and frankly like i don't understand how that's even possible that this is going to happen but i'm hearing a lot of things about you know really really high prices on these aib models so yeah i definitely would be trying to get those but yeah if you want to get one again be sitting there on amd.com on march 18th but hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that more and more countries are going to continue to ban GPU mining because of its high power draw? Or do you think that things really aren't going to change? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.